You're listening to Agile Ideas, the podcast, hosted by Fatima Rabucci. For anyone listening out there not having a good day, please know there is help out there. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Agile Ideas. I'm Fatima, CEO at Agile Management Office, Mental Health Ambassador, and your host. This podcast is made possible thanks to Agile Management Office. We help businesses in three key ways improving organizational culture and delivery, supporting transformation and change, and streamlining governance and process. We use 20 years of proven practice and our proprietary, the AMO way model. In this episode today, I am going to be talking to you about capability management and why it is the key to success in business, regardless of how large your business is or how small. Now, when I say capability management, a lot of the time people respond with, yeah, yeah, I understand that that's like what skills that people have. And I say to them, no, that's not actually what capability management is or what I'm referring to. I think about capabilities much broader than that and as an essential ingredient for the success of any organisation, whether you are a small business like us, which is less than 12 people, or whether you are a international, global, multi-billion dollar company. And the reason I can say that is because I have got firsthand experience helping organizations as large as Toyota or as small as our business with capabilities. And so I'm going to take you through some of the information around what capability management is and help to demonstrate today why it's so important and what you need to think about when you think about capabilities. So let's dive straight into it. Now, when we think about capability management overall, capabilities is something that describes the what a business does in order to deliver value to its customers and stakeholders. Now, organizations globally are made up of several levels of capabilities and therefore a specific capability isn't always directly tied to a specific product or service. There may be multiple capabilities that tie to a particular product or service. For example, in our business we help organizations to introduce PMOs or project management officers as one of the many things that we do. And when thinking about that, in a PMO, depending on the size of an organization, we may actually help a company to deploy a dozen different capabilities. For example, we may be helping them to deploy resource management capabilities so that they can better manage their staff's time against projects or a demand management capability so that they can better prioritize initiatives and projects that tie directly to organizational strategy. Or we may be helping them to deploy dependency management capabilities, which is about helping them to understand the integration and dependency points between departments, functions, or projects, and also with vendors. So just because we provide PMO as a service, it doesn't necessarily mean that that is one particular capability. And that is why it's really important to know that you may have multiple capabilities tied to a particular product or service. Ultimately, it's about your ability to enable an organization to achieve its operational and strategic objectives. And you do that with capabilities. The management of those capabilities is where it's combining the right resources to achieve your strategic and operational objectives and then aligning your business processes and your people in a way that enables you to continue to meet your customers with the products and services you deliver using capability management. Capabilities the capabilities in general can be identified, implemented, measured, and improved upon. And these are some of the key activities that you will undertake when you are looking at capability management more broadly. And so this is what we call capability management. So first, to reframe, you need to start with the what. So what a business does, which ties directly to its products and services, are the capabilities. And on the other hand, the management of those capabilities is where you identify, implement, measure, and improve. So in order for an organization to move towards a 
one that is capability led, it enables them a much more streamlined conversation. And the importance of this is really, really relevant when we think about projects and programs or portfolio management offices or PMO for short. And that is because the problem with many PMOs or many organizations who bring in a PMO is they often build frameworks and processes around an individual. I'm going to say that again. They often build frameworks and processes around an individual. How many times have you seen a new PMO manager brought on board into an organization who starts thinking about what they need to do, what they like, what they have done in the past, what they think works? It's all about them. What we need to be thinking about instead is why the organization exists or the team that the function that the PMO is coming into. What are the capabilities that are necessary, even if you're starting lean? How those capabilities are going to be deployed and followed? And this is where the processes come in and then the who. Now, I'm not suggesting you can't have someone come in that is to set up and run your PMO, but a lot of the time a PMO will focus on the who, the how, the what, and then the why. And I'm suggesting we flip it on its head and we focus on the why, the what, the how, then the who. Now, in order for us to make sure once we have a clear agreement that we're going to move forward with capabilities, we need to first make sure we understand the problem statement before we start deploying or setting up or measuring or introducing capabilities. Now, sure, in our small business, I can introduce capabilities around hairdressing, but that really doesn't have anything to do with the why of our company or the why of the companies we work with. So we need to think about what is the problem statement, and we do that by gathering that information via a number of different sources from an organization's team across all levels in order to understand their requirements. We use a very, um, very targeted and proven approach that we leveraged using the AMO way model in order for us to do that. But you can do that in so many different ways. But the way that we do it brings about a clear understanding of the requirements that an organization needs in order for them to be able to move forward with capability management. Then we deep dive into the capabilities themselves. This is where we actually leverage what capabilities that we have and work out whether there is any that are missing that the client needs. And sometimes we feel that from the capabilities we discussed with them at the outset, a lot of the time they actually have very low maturity or they're actually missing a lot of the capabilities that are necessary for them to have strong project, program, and portfolio management operations. And that may be really unusual because in a large, more mature organization, to have those many gaps, you may be thinking, how is that possible? But it fundamentally is a challenge that we see over and over and over again. And part of the reason we see that challenge is because constantly there's a revolving door of project management office people that's coming and going. And every time they someone new comes in, they reset the wheel. Many years ago when I was working in in banking, I remember being brought in as the fourth PMO manager for a team that had had three previous people in the last two years. Now that's four times the disruption, four times the this is what we're going to do, four times the change for project managers, and it was just so ineffective and so wasteful. So then we think about what makes up the broader picture, once you've defined what it is that you uh, believe your capabilities are, you need to then put a framework in place around that and determine a framework to explain not only what capabilities is to your organization, but all of the associated collateral around process, the, the knowledge center of the information, the use of those capabilities, as well as a number of other things in order to help an organization to move forward with their path around deploying their capabilities and maintaining them. Now, again, there's a lot of different paths that you can take to do that, and each organization will be different. But ultimately, the key is to make sure that everybody is on the same page with what capability management is in order for them to be supportive of it. 
At the end of the day, when we think about capabilities overall, there is a number of different things that we can factor in. But the most important things are that we make sure that we can make the change stick. And the way that we do that is through a number of different uh, strategies, from working groups, setting up knowledge centers, coaching people, which is something we commonly do, helping to define that framework and driving accountability. There is a lot of things that we can do beyond that. But ultimately, the key here is helping organizations to understand that capability management, if I reiterate, is what a business does to deliver value to its customers and stakeholders. Organizations globally are made up of several levels of capabilities. The capabilities themselves are not a one-to-one match to your products and services, and that underneath your capabilities, you will have your processes. Your governance becomes the glue that holds your processes together. And then finally, rather than starting with the who, let's start with the why. The why, then the what, then the how, then the who. So hopefully that's been helpful for you. And if you need any more information or help with capability management in your organization, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. Please share this with someone or rate it if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to follow us on social media and to stay up to date with all things Agile Ideas, go to our website, www.agilemanagementoffice.com. I hope you've been able to learn, feel, or be inspired today. Until next time, what's your Agile idea? Agile Idea.